Hello, everyone. My name is Charles, the marketing maverick Davis. I want to welcome you to the Ultimate Brand Design Channel. Today, I will be talking with Ms. Heather Holmes. She is the founder and CEO of Publicity for Good, purpose-driven brand. PR leader, CEO, top woman in PR. Heather, tell the people who you are. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. So I'm Heather, and I'm the founder of Publicity for Good. And we work with purpose-driven people and companies to um, get your name um, out there, to grow your community, and to get you in the media. I always wanted to be an entrepreneur, though. So I got my start in wanting to be an entrepreneur um, when I was in high school. My dad and uncle were really successful in real estate. Um, you know, built a high net worth. Uh, like they were so humble. Like they wore sweatpants. Like, you know, I, people that have money don't talk about money, right? Like, and I saw how hard they worked and I saw how humble they were. Um, and then my dad died of cancer in my senior year of high school. Mm -hmm. And then my uncle died a couple years later. And building a legacy, being an entrepreneur was really the only connection I felt like it was like my way to honor them and to connect with them and to show my kids what's possible, right? So that's really the heart story and that I always knew I was going to be an entrepreneur. Okay, that's okay. But why did you choose public relations? Sure. So um, I went to school for communications and for the longest time, um, I thought I was going to do work with nonprofits and that I love getting people excited about causes and people that are making a difference. So right. I originally thought I was going to go into volunteering or volunteerism or lobbying or like any of those things, right? Um, I did a, an intensive at Georgetown that called the Fund for American Studies, and it was mm -hmm. all on how businesses can make a difference. Like Andrew Carnegie, he built a library, right? Like the more money you make, the more people you can feed, the more people you can teach, the bigger impact. So mm -hmm. I really became even more inspired about business. Um, it was really studying the free market and capitalism and how being an entrepreneur really can make a difference. And it's not really a bad thing, right? right. So I fell in love with that idea. I went to college for communications. Um, and then from there, in my early 20s, um, a TV station actually came to uh, my house and they did a segment on me. Um, at the time, I was a wine tender and I was working at an investment company. And they were doing a story uh, called uh, like boomerang kids. And it was kids that had moved home because they couldn't find uh, like a big job in the, mar in the market with the way the economy was. This was back in 2012. Um, I loved that experience. Um, I quit the investment company. Um, I then worked at, um, I got an internship at a PR firm. And that's really where I fell in love um, and did PR there for three and a half years. And when I first started out, I remember I had my cubby planner and I literally <laughs> had a pen and I would write down like little check marks, uh -huh. how many people I emailed, how many people I called. Um, and it was very strict in that every single week we had to get media interest for our clients. So right. I couldn't go home unless I secured a certain number of media interviews or people interested wow. in reviewing a product. So. I became really good, really obsessed. And before I knew it, I was booking like 35 interviews every single week for our brands and clients. And I fell in love and I realized, you know, I can volunteer my time, which is great. It's, it's honorable. Um, I can lobby, which is fine, but I can literally get an entrepreneur or brand on TV they can reach millions of people and, in my uh -huh. opinion, have a bigger impact right. quickly. Um, and I just fell in love with the art of PR, and I've been doing it now for over a decade. Fabulous. There were some key points that you brought up that we're going to cover. Uh, number one was the 2012 end of interview about people having to move back home with their parents because they couldn't mm -hmm. find a job. That's an important topic. We're going to cover that later. 
and how you actually fell in love with the process of PR. And so how did that lead into you formulating your company? Sure. So I worked at the advertising agency for three and a half years. And while I was there, um, I was also like, I was, I was working a lot. I loved it. I, you know, I was um, drinking the Kool-Aid. I, you know, I could see myself there forever. Um, I was doing new business. I was really good um, at building relationships with new clients. Um, I was booking the most amount of media, um, you know, like I would have stayed forever, but what happened is on the side, like on the weekends, um, I was doing network marketing um, and I wasn't bringing in a lot of money, but I loved what I was learning and I loved the personal development and I loved the community and I liked it. Now, I wasn't making much money. Only a couple hundred dollars a month was not conflicting with my performance or my job or anything. It was just, you know, a, a nice way to bring in a couple hundred dollars a month to put in my savings. That was my goal. Um, okay. I was given an ultimatum and that I couldn't do, they didn't want me doing network marketing. What? Yeah. They like, they were like this, they're like all in for the agency or network marketing. Wow. Which like in this world, like people are so multifaceted. There's people that are really successful at their company and they're selling pies. Like we're so multifaceted, right? Like we want to make a difference. We want to make money. We want to have an impact. But I was given an ultimatum. So June 15, 2015, um, I quit. Um, they took back two weeks of my pay. Um, I moved home. Yeah, I moved home to my mom's house. Uh, I was 25 at the time. Um, I got a job at, uh, at a local gym, which I loved, a lifetime fitness. Uh, it was just a normal minimum wage job, but I wanted to, to work out and I got a free membership and kind of figure out what I wanted to do. Okay. Um, I ended up um, getting lifetime fitness as a client for like one city, um, which was Ooh. incredible. But I, you know, worked at Lifetime Fitness and over time from talking to entrepreneurs, like I had my first client and they're like, hey, we manage websites. We'll pay you a hundred dollars if you can get our client on TV. And I was like, sure, why not? Like, I, you know, so I did it. I, and I sent my pitch out. Uh, I took my car in to get an oil change. I opened my laptop and I secured two TV segments in Utah in a market I never worked in before. And it was that moment that I knew I wanted to keep doing PR and that it was exciting, it was fun. You know, like I sent an email to people I didn't even know and they said yes to do an interview. So it was really that moment where I'm like, I'm gonna scale up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scale a PR company, I'm gonna build a PR company. Right. My goal really is just to make up what my rev my income was at the agency right just a normal salary i think it was like fifty thousand or so maybe you know um, um i just wanted to make up what i was making um at the agency i worked three and a half years full-time at the gym minimum wage and then all that money um i funneled into building uh my business so i cool. still kept the minimum wage job and I'd really like, I'd work there probably eight to five. So I'd really work, you know, like four to 7.30 in the morning uh, and then at night totally hustling. Um, but that was really the start. Heather, do you realize that that is a common story amongst professionals? We'll go just so far and some event will happen that is totally unexpected. <laughs> And then we have to reinvent ourselves. You, I, as a personal brand strategist coach, that's one of the things I explain to people. You have a lot of talent and skills, and that incident that you thought was bad actually turns out to be a blessing. And it started yeah, it was you. Yeah, such and, a blessing. Yeah, yeah. I, I had to go through the same thing, the exact same thing. We get to the top of what we're doing and don't realize how good we really are. And then circumstances in life will push us out there. Yeah. 
and, and we'll see how talented and gifted we really are. That's a fantastic story. See, that's the kind of stuff I like to get on this channel. People need to understand. No, seriously. They need to understand that 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 incident happening in life doesn't have to be a catastrophe. It just right. doesn't. You just may need to step out there and try some new things or get a strategy coach or something to see how you can reformulate your life into something better. Totally. So now you brought up a couple of things. Number one, mm -hmm. I want to cover that 2012 incident about having to interview people who had to move back home with their parents. And uh -huh. you ended up having to do the same thing, didn't you? Yeah. So, um, I, so here's the deal. Um, I, so I graduated from college and I first worked at an investment company and I was a wine tender as well because it was all commission. Okay. okay. I saw on Facebook that a local TV station wanted to interview local graduates who, you know, had to move home because mm -hmm. they weren't making enough money or they couldn't find a job. Like I had a job, but it was all commission. So I could go, I could go 90 days free and no money. I'd make money as a wine tender, but that was like the money I would use for gas to get to the appointment. Right. Right. So I reached out um, and I was interviewed and I just, I loved the whole experience. Like I loved it. And it was that moment that it was my realization, aha, that I really, you know, I, my vision was at the time to be like on TV as like an anchor. There was a local woman um, who did community affairs and she uh, promoted all the local events and nonprofits. That was my dream. Right. Um, right. But it was that moment that made me pivot. And then I went on Twitter at the time and said, hey, you know, I'm looking for an internship. And then there's a radio station in Columbus called CD 101. They reshared my tweet that I was looking for a communications internship. And then the like ad agency that I worked for saw it. And they're like, you know, I had to start as an intern though, because I never worked at an agency before. So right. I went from graduating from college to working at investment come to not even work, like not even having a full-time normal salary job. I was an intern. And then 90 days later, um, I then worked for the agency. I like I was an intern, and then I worked, became like a full time employee. So, what would you tell women going through this right now? Because we see the economy in America; people are being laid off like crazy. What yeah. Would you tell people like that. What, would, what kind of advice would you give them right now? Yeah, I know there's stats and I know there's stories, but. I'm a firm believer that you can get your own seat at the table. So like I put in a lot of time and I pray a lot and there's so much that I've done to build relationships with people and serve them. Like there's been times over the years where there's people who's, who are way more successful than me. And I knew if I had them in my corner as an advocate or mentor, it would help me. So there's been times where I've done things for free for them. I've, you know, I've been their publicist. So I know it's hard, I get it, but I firmly believe that if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, if you seek out mentors, if you do the work, if you pray, like, and yes, there's been so many times where I haven't had systems, but it's just been like scratching and scratching until the ceiling and just doing the work, like uh -huh. the non-sexy work. I mean, yeah, yeah, it really is like 15 hour days. It really is, right? Yeah. Um, but like, there's such an opportunity for you. So. Heather, stop, stop right there, stop right there. This is something I've been running into doing these interviews. The fact that your spirituality came into play. You yeah. talked about, you prayed, and then you just kept at it. You also, I don't know what you know about the Bible, but you started planting seeds. Yes. Okay, so now my question for you is this. You planted all these seeds, giving. Give and it shall be given to you. Yes. Which seed did you plant that turned into the mustard seed? That's what I want to know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
my one of my dreams was always to have a million dollar company by the time I was 30 and that happened I'm now um 35 you know now we're looking to scale um to 10 million and beyond now just because you're at that revenue does not mean that's what's in the bank, right? Like, like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you have a team and expenses and running a business and all those things. But um, I would say that's one of them. Um, uh-huh. Another um, is like everything has happened. Like when I first met Austin, my husband now, like a weekend, we mapped out everything in a journal, like year oh. one. Next year, we're going to get engaged next year married next year baby next year baby like i feel so blessed and since we've met every single year has been something monumental so like engagement marriage pregnant baby pregnant baby so like i'll have three under three um like really soon so like to me having babies like that's such a blessing But Heather, wow, this is this is really taking on an exciting turn because you started writing down your dreams. That yeah, absolutely a biblical concept. It says, well, with that, um, I realized that it says in the Bible, and I'm trying to get better at my vision, but it's like those without vision shall perish. Ooh, that's a good one. Right. Like, so like once I got to that million, I didn't know where I was going. And then I became a mom and I'm like, well, who am I? So like, I'm really redefining that like right now and like now even more intentional with like the journaling and like doing my devotion and reading the Bible and like doing that first. And I'm only probably like a month in right now back on like being really consistent. Okay. But I'll also tell you too, like I've seen so many miracles happen. Okay. Like Come on with it. I mean, it's everything from clients being late on paying, but miracles like an old client that owes you from the past pays and you're able to pay your team, right? Like, or you know, like our first million dollar year, um, which was the uh-huh. year of the pandemic, uh-huh. uh, we had a client who wanted to pay for six months in full. And we were off by 75,000 for the year to meet a million dollar goal. And with that one contract, we were a little bit over a million. Like, you can't say that's not a miracle, God, like all those things, like, right? It's not like I get big contracts like that every single day. Yeah. That's a miracle. Yeah, it is. (laughs) People don't see it, though. Heather, people don't see it. It's like they think, oh, this is just coincidence. No, it's not. If you're really spiritually aware, you will know that God is working on your behalf to yeah. provide for your dreams to come through. That's really true. Yeah. See, I told you, I told you, it's like when, I, when we started talking earlier, I was like, we're going to go with the flow. Because, see, I, this happens in all of my interviews. At some point, we get to talking about God and the spirituality. My other YouTube channel is called the God Principle. I started that, <laughs> and I started that. This is a project that God had given me some years ago, and it's coming to fruition now. So yeah. let's move on into what's happening now. What what's really important right now is how can you help someone. What is going because right now I know the political season is going to have a big impact. What yeah. do you see happening? What do you see happening? Yeah. So, I mean, here's a couple of things. It depends on what type of company you run. Uh, we work with a lot of consumer brands, like product based companies. So, mm-hmm. traditionally, like I haven't seen it really impacted um, that much by the news cycle because a lot, like, we're working with like, Martha Stewart, Food and Wine, Garden and Gun, right? Like Men's Journal, like some of you, some of those like really great food places, but they don't cover the politics. So it depends on what your business is. Uh-huh. Now, there's a lot of like third party websites that you can write for or will feature you. So, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> sorry. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, what's going on, your child or your husband? Which one? No, I saw my husband walking with like a 
like a backpack on. And I was like, bring like, him on camera. Oh, he's outside. He took outsider, almost two year old. They're going outside for an adventure. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but okay. yeah. Um, but I mean, it depends on what your business is, right? Um, that's probably the first thing. Um, why PR will help you as an entrepreneur is it's going to help you reach new audiences. So you have to have an Instagram account. You have to have social media accounts because if they go to your account and you're not posting ever, they're going to think your business is dead. Okay. Right. But when you're on a podcast like this, or you're in an article or you're on TV, you're able to reach new audiences. So going to what I said before, if we got you on a local TV show, Charles, and say you only, I don't even know, like, okay, say you only had a thousand followers on Instagram or whatever, it doesn't matter. But you went on one TV show, three minutes of your time, you could reach millions of people, right? And building your social media following is a long game. That's why I love PR is you're able to get in front of other audiences and then you're able to add the media logos to your website, to your landing page, to your bio, and you get traffic to your website too from being in the media. Okay, let's okay. Let's use me as a case study. What would I, what would you suggest for me? I'm a digital marketer. I'm over fifty. Mm -hmm. I rebranded my company. I moved to the Philippines. Uh, how would how would this work for me? Just, just brainstorming. What would you do? Yeah. So when we work with you, we build out um, a marketing plan around your your business your messaging and your promotion. So that's the first step, okay? So mm -hmm. what's going on the rest of the year? Are you launching any new promotions? Um, and what are you wanting to sell? So that's the first thing. We then look at what's happening in the news. We look at awareness days. It was just National Small Business Week. Uh -huh. June 30th is National Social Media Day. So we create okay. these moments where Charles is relevant, where he could go on, you know, and do a story and talk about how to build your business with social media or we can even build an incredible headline you know meet charles a 50 plus chicago resident who's helping hundreds of entrepreneurs scale their business and is living the nomadic lifestyle in the philippines so we build out these amazing stories headlines and then get them placed or pitch them to the media but it's those stories that are really powerful for me when the pandemic hit um, I pitched my story to all the media outlets. We were living full time in an airstream. We lived in there for three and a half years. And, um, you know, that's how we got featured in Business Insider and Forbes and Fox News and WGN. It was our story. Right, right. So, so Heather, okay. One of the problems that I see is ageism. That if people age, the mm -hmm corporations kind of push them to the side and that's something that i've had to deal with in addition to uh how about what is it dei you know uh diversity inclusion mm -hmm. you know how how does this play through because i'm gonna tell you a real something a lot of people know how old do you think i am so you yeah 45 Huh? 45? No. 40? How old? I'm 70 years old. Shut up. <laughs> no, you're not. You yes, are? Yes, I am. How are you 70? Like, what did you do? You look so good. <laughs> it's my spirituality. I have a long story. You'd be surprised what my wow. life has been. The God principles coming coming to this point in my life covers that. But this is about you, because I mean, wow, my story, yeah, yeah, it's like I could. Wow, I don't even know how to. I want to write a book about it, but I think putting a a, a YouTube channel is better because I can build that. This is all my skill set. I've been yeah. involved in this since the internet was introduced. Wow. I teach since I was 16. I was one of those gifted children. Wow. Okay. And so, That's so good. That's so good. <laughs> I don't believe you. You have to send me your, like, 
your like social security card and license or something. Don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Look on LinkedIn, you'll see my history there. It's like you Google my name. I've been around a long time and I've learned that everybody has a time. Now, what you want that time to be, if you're working with God or whatever your spiritual practices are, it yeah. will manifest in your life. But anyway, yeah. we're at 20-something minutes, and I want you to give me your best tip because I'm going to take that and make that short when I publish this out on YouTube and LinkedIn and all the other places. What would you, if you're trying to, trying to pitch me, what would you say? Sure. So I'm Heather, and I'm the founder of Publicity for Good. We help you to become internationally known. Getting in the media is the fastest way to grow your business. You're going to drive traffic to your website. You're able to add media logos to your landing page as seen on. I can tell you that there's way more credibility. Uh, you getting in the media, all your friends and family will think you're not just playing on your phone, you're really building a business. Mm -hmm. And I've seen businesses grow by 40% by getting in the media, updating their bios, driving traffic to their offer, and increasing your pricing. And the why I love media is because it's going to take you years to build a social media following, which you have to do, but you could be on one TV station or one podcast and reach millions of people and be endorsed by that audience. Um, and then as well, at Publicity for Good, we've partnered with over 300 brands, and this is our life mission. So. If you're wanting PR, if you want help, if you want to do a free discovery call, you know, we're always here to serve. Thank you, Heather. This is beautiful. We could keep going. I know. Uh, I'm going to ask people, like, subscribe, share. If you need PR, publicity for good, um, contact her. I endorse her field because her, her story is, is so similar to a lot of other people, and I'm gonna thank you for watching. Okay, Heather, you gotta.